First things first, watch this video to the end, you will not be disappointed. Since there's been so much interest in this thing as a turbo, which it was never designed to be, uh, I've decided to go ahead and dyno test it. So uh, I'm going to take you on that dyno journey here in a second. But uh, first things first, my predictions. Well, according to the compressor map, this thing looks like it should support about a whopping 45 horsepower before it becomes a restriction. Only one way to find out. Let's go see. It's a beautiful fall day. We got up before dawn, hit the road. We're on our way to Ray McNew's Dino Shop. Ray McNew, you older guys will remember, was on Pinks and Pinks All Out, and he's working on our show All Out Live and the Call Out. I'm with Eric Scott, video guy extraordinaire. We're going to try to dyno this thing. Uh, I'm not entirely convinced it's going to make any power because I didn't make it to be a turbo. But Ray wrangled a 2008 Harley Ultra Classic, went to a Harley dealership to get uh, the flange measurements, and those guys were pretty awesome there. I think it was Old Glory Harley, if I remember right. So a uh, shout out to those guys for helping us out. Made a flange adapter for the throttle body. We're going to bolt this thing on. We're going to see if it's going to make any power. And at this point in time, I'm not sure. It might, it might not. When we got to Ray's shop, there was a beautiful 65 Mustang owned by a young man who was doing the smart thing and wanted to get some baseline dyno poles before he started modifying it. Uh, it's a 1965 Ford Mustang. It's got a 302 in it. I don't know much what all has actually been done to the engine or what's in it. Uh, all I've mostly done, it's not a lot, but I've gotten it painted. I put some MSD uh, distributor and a computer in it. Not much else. I want to do a lot more to it, but... So you're getting baseline pulls here? Yeah, and hopefully I'm going to see how it does and maybe work on it to get some more. Any guesses? I was thinking maybe 215. 215? Alright, let's ask Ray. Ray McNew of McNew's Automotive. So what do you think on this little guy here? Um, I would say probably mid-upper 100s. You're going to maybe dial in a little timing? Yeah, we'll see what the timing looks like after the initial pull. This is our torque line. So the car made 160 foot-pounds of torque. And this is our horsepower line. The car made 118 horsepower. Um, I think the ignition timing's off in it. Um, it just didn't want to pull. It, that pull only went to 4,000 RPM. So looking at it, it's not making clean power at all. So we're going to take a look at the uh, ignition timing and see if we can pull some more power out of it and get a cleaner pull with it. After checking the timing on the car as it was brought in, Ray found that it was set to 54 degrees. 54 degrees is a lot of timing. So for his second pull, he pulled it down to 36, and for the final pull, he pulled it down to 32. But at 36 degrees of timing, the car picked up over 50 horsepower. Here's the final pull. timing right now right around 32 degrees and the car seems to like it. Um, the air fuel um, stayed relatively the same. It came in just a little bit richer on tip in but on the pull it didn't really change much in the car but you can see at uh, 4,000 we're up uh, 7 foot-pounds of torque and 5 horsepower and the line's getting smoother so I think we're pretty close to optimum with this setup at this point. All right, so you went from 118 to 180. What do you think? I'm glad it went from uh, 118 to 180, and uh, hopefully I can maybe get some more stuff to it to get a little bit more out of it. Ladies and gentlemen, Ray McNew. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> 
With the Mustang and its owner much happier, and who wouldn't be with 50% more horsepower, it's time to move on to the main event, the reason why we're all here. Let's go to the Harley. We bolted the adapter flange and tube I fabbed up to Ron's Harley, and a special thanks to Ron for letting us use his Harley as a dyno mule. Ron is one of the guys over at McNew's Automotive. Before we made that first pull to get a baseline with that tube, I was caught on mic, but off camera, saying this. I am more skeptical about this now on site than I was even coming in, and I was skeptical coming in. <laughs> Ray saddled up and made the baseline pull. I'm using the dyno viewing software at home to screenshot these pulls because it was a little tight in there, but we had our baseline. It was 63 horsepower and 84 foot-pounds of torque. So let's just do a pull with the motor completely disconnected and we'll see what kind of a restriction this is. And we'll see if we can get your bike down at 30 horsepower, like I said. <laughs> All right. I think I'm going to call Ray Captain Understatement. Restriction? Man, that thing killed it. Check this out. 44 horsepower and let's call it 71 and a half foot-pounds of torque. But that was expected because it wasn't running. Let's turn that little electric turbo on and see what happens. All right, this battery's pretty strong. It's 16.38. That's smooth. I love your confidence, Ray. Let's see what he draws here. Because it's restricted, it's only 23 amps. You ready? Hold on, let me make sure we stop this thing. All right, let's do it. Don't freak out, I blurred this thing on purpose. This is for all those guys who just shuttle through the video looking for the dinographs. As I said in the beginning of the video, there is a big, shiny surprise waiting at the end of this thing, so let's just get through the data that this graph gives us, and then all shall be revealed. Ray mentioned he saw 104 kPa, and that is boost. It's about 0.6 psi, but it's boost. And it did make power. It actually did make more power than it did without it but only up to about 2800 RPM. After that, the airflow just couldn't keep up with the motor's needs. The other thing that I find interesting is that with the electric turbo running, it actually mirrors the line with it off, but it shows an increase of power consistently across the pull. So with it running, it's clearly moving more air and relieving itself of its own internal restriction. Now let's turn to the surprise. So the most gratifying thing for me was that this thing performed exactly how the compressor map said it would. So that's all great, but is it good for an electric turbo? No. It'd make a great crankcase evac pump though, which is what I built it for. But since there's been so much interest in electric turbos in the comments section and two major OEMs are developing them and I just found out that two aftermarket companies, significant aftermarket companies, well-established ones, are developing electric turbos. But let's stop calling them electric turbos. They're not electric turbos, they're electric superchargers. Let me introduce you to my little friend. Let's make a real one. That's a Vortec V2. There's two reasons why I want to use this thing. 
One, because the compressor map, using the exact same logic that we used for the little KO3 turbo, will actually make some boost and some power on a real car with a real engine. In fact, I plan to use my car. On my car, this thing should make about 600 horsepower. Now, naturally aspirated, the car makes about 500 horsepower. With the Whipple, it makes between 800 and 900 horsepower. But we'll start with one and then maybe we'll get to two. I figure we could probably push 8,000 to 10,000 watts, so eight to 10 kilowatts through this thing, and uh, dyno test it and see what happens. Obviously, this is gonna cost me a significant amount of money, so even though I hate to do this, uh, I've opened up a Patreon page, so if this data is worth something to you, consider donating a buck or two to the cause. The link is in the description below, and uh, stay tuned. There's obviously a lot more to come. Shiny.